Hello, in this video I'm going to be comparing and contrasting Final Cut Pro 10 and DaVinci Resolve 15. So first I'll be talking about Resolve and then later we'll talk about Final Cut. Okay, so a little bit of I don't know, history about DaVinci Resolve is that originally it just started as a color correction program. It didn't do anything else, it just did color correction. Their color correction is um, really good. It's been used in many professional things and it's probably the best color correction software out there right now. So DaVinci Resolve is free. They do have a paid version it is $300. With the paid version you get two main things. One is a lot of these open FX things such as dead pixel filter, uh, dust buster, pretty cool name, um, patch, basically lens corrections, and you also get noise reduction, which is, there's probably a lot of it in this video since my room's pretty dark. But that's just basically like the little dancing things that you see like squiggling around the screen. It has one of the best noise reduction um, with the th paid version. With the free version, you don't get any of that, but you get most of the other things. The other main thing that you get with the paid version is that you can collaborate with other people in real time. Not quite sure how that works, but you can. And so that's just another feature of the paid version. DaVinci Resolve has six main um, sections down here at the bottom. The Media tab, the Edit tab, the Fusion tab, the Color tab, the Fairlight tab, and the Deliver tab. Each of these has a specific purpose and different from Final Cut, these are all in one program, whereas Final Cut you'll have um, the deliver thing, you kind of have like a media encoder edit tab, that's basically what Final Cut is. Um, with the new addition to Final Cut that they got in like July. They added new color correction tools that really help make that better. You used to have to use a different plugin, Color Finale, to make it work, but now um, they have that built in. Still not quite as good as Resolves. The Fusion tab is a section of DaVinci that's kind of the same thing as Adobe After Effects or Final Cut Pro or Apple's Motion. So. This is built into DaVinci, whereas Final Cut's Motion is a completely separate software that you have to put stuff into and then export it back into Final Cut. This is basically the special effects tabs tab where you can do all sorts of special effects, adding, tracking, whatever. Okay, so when you get started in a project in Resolve, um, this is what you do. First, you collect all your footage into, well, you don't have to do it all in one folder, but I just put all my footage in one folder, drag and drop it in, and it brings up all the clips. Um, with these clips, you can create little folders over here that you can drag clips into to organize them in certain ways. However, for a small project like this, you don't really need separate folders. If your computer is not the fastest, what you're going to want to do is generate optimized media. That just makes a lower quality version of the clip. That way you can the computer can read that when you're editing for faster playback. Okay, so generating optimized media usually takes a while. And that's because it's basically remaking all of the clips just in a lower quality. But while it's loading, I will explain to you a few other things about the Media tab in DaVinci. So over here you have all of these metadata things that you can add to help you find clips later and then you can sort it by that using these smart bins. You can make smart bins and then you can, it will automatically add the 
clips with the criteria that you add the metadata in into that bin. That way it organizes it in a folder structure so that you can see all of that. Um, over here is just basically accessing your file system of the entire computer. And down here is all your clips. And up here is the viewer where you can see the clips that are being played. One really nice thing about Resolve is that you can have this thing that they call power bins. So basically you can put clips in there that you use often or that you want to use between multiple projects and you can just come back to them in whatever project you're working on. So for example the intro for all of the announcement videos I just keep in a power bin here and then I don't have to re-import it every time into Resolve. One really nice feature about both DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro is their keyboard customization. So you can customize the keyboard to do certain things so that you don't always have to be moving your hands around in awkward positions. So for example, all of the commands that I do, I like to keep on this one side of the keyboard here. That way I can just keep one hand on the keyboard over here and the other hand on the mouse over here. And then also control and shift and alt are also right over here so I can just use one hand on the keyboard and get most of the things I need done with the keyboard on here. Same is true for Final Cut Pro. One feature of Resolve that Final Cut does not have is the fact that um, Resolve doesn't normally autosave. I think there is a setting that you can have it autosave. Okay, so this is the Final Cut portion of this video. I'll be talking about Final Cut. Final Cut Pro 10. So Final Cut is made by Apple. Um, the program is not free. It costs $300 to buy. Or if you have a college email, you can get this and a few other programs for $200. So that's a good deal. But um, this is the interface of Final Cut. It has almost everything that DaVinci has. The Fusion tab of DaVinci is sort of like this other motion program that you can buy along with it. That's like special effects stuff that you can do. The timeline is one of the main differences between Final Cut and the rest of the editing programs because Final Cut has what they call a magnetic timeline. So basically what that means is that when you delete a clip, for example, everything just moves forward and so everything is magnetic so it comes together automatically without you having to delete the empty space which you have to do in most other programs. Another feature about the timeline in Final Cut is that they have this one that just follows your mouse around so that you don't always have to click up here at the top like you do in DaVinci. You can just click anywhere or just start playing from wherever your mouse is at. Since this is not the updated version, since it's an older computer, um, you have to use color finale to do color grades. So all you would do is just click on it, drag it onto a clip, and then you can open all the controls and edit the videos like that. So that is how you do color corrections in the not newest version of Final Cut. Um, you can do it natively in the program, like you can in DaVinci. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, the sound in Divin um, yeah. er, the sound in Final Cut is kind of different. You have to expand the audio to separate it, and then you can edit the sound separately from the video that way. So in order to keep the interface cleaner. They kind of just have uh, the up. audio and video together as one, and then if you want to um, edit them separately, then you have to undo that. 
there isn't really like a in-depth sound panel in Final Cut. You have to use uh, Logic if you want to do anything super deep into sound. Two minutes till live. Post the studio, please. Two minutes till live. That's me. Okay, bye. Okay, I'm back. The last thing I wanted to talk about was that the Deliver page in DaVinci Resolve has more options than the export part of uh, Final Cut. So Apple made another program called Compressor and that gives you more options for other things that you can export and it just gives you more options in terms of uh, just ways that you can have the file formatted. So that is all for the comparison between DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro. Uh, if I had to rate them uh, for DaVinci Resolve, the free version, I'd give it a 4.9 because for being free, it's um, basically as good as Final Cut Pro is. And then with the paid version, I'd say it's um, also pretty good. The paid version and DaVinci doesn't get you a whole lot so I'd probably give it a little bit lower of a star rating for that. But uh, Final Cut Pro, I'd give four, four and a half stars because it's also really good, especially with the built-in color correction tools. So thanks for watching.